Welcome. My name is Lucas Kreidiger. I'm a principal engineer working in the Cisco Data Center unit. And today we're going to talk a little bit about multi-tenancy in the data center in 2016. So we're doing some fancy new stuff uh, in the data center. It's called VXLAN EVPN. And with VXLAN and EVPN, which uh, provides me a, a multi-protocol BGB control plane, I can do now much more efficient multi-tenancy approaches. So when we look at back in the times, what we did was something like VRF Lite, right? So we created these VRFs, and for each VRF where we wanted to have connectivity going on, we created a respective routing instance and the link either in a physical or in a virtual way. So when we represent that in a way of how it really was, we created a whole bunch of routers within a single uh, physical instance and assigned some VRF names to it. We assigned some subnet to it and respectively it was always whole subnet based. Now today in 2016 we try to make that a little bit more efficient and for this I'm going to flip the whiteboard a bit. Now when we're starting with the VXLAN encapsulation and a multi-protocol BGP control plane we are able to leverage something called VPNs, virtual private networks, which we already had in the MPLS world before. That means we still create these different VRFs in my given router switches, which have the capability to do so, but the wire is only a logical wire. We're not going to create any more direct to direct tax or something in that direction. We let VXLAN and the respective VRF VNIs do the job in there. Now, as said previously, we were mostly looking at subnets back in the VRF light area. Now, in the world of data center fabrics and in the world of having more granularity in the given network itself, we're going down to the host level and actually provide something what we call DAG or the Distributed Anycast Gateway. With the distributed Anycast gateway, we get a lot of first hops wherever we want to have them. We can have uh, a default gateway existing on every switch we want to, and that means I can reduce the subnet routing approach we used back in the times with VRF Flight or MPLS L3 VPN down to a host routing approach where a given host, let's say we use here 11110, can be behind one switch and 11120 from the same subnet can be behind the other one, both sharing the first top gateway of 1111, and this across the whole network, across all the switches we are having in there. So you see multi-tenancy becomes now a little bit different as it can go down on the host level with the distributed Anycast gateway. I can reduce the amount of configuration complexity by using something like VNIs to do the stitching of the VRFs in a more automatic way. So I don't have to use the verf light per link, per process approach anymore. And as previously said, by using the host routing approach, we're going away from a subnet base down to a host level routing and multi-tenancy approach. Now this is what we do in the layer three area when we talk about multi-tenancy. But we also had multi-tenancy in more of the area of layer two. So there was something like a notion of VLAN with that 4,000 uh, identifiers or a little bit more than 4,000 identifiers in there. With VXLAN, we're going into the 16 millions. So uh, we're going from 4K to 16 million in what the namespace provides, which gives you a much more flexibility in regards of assigning layer two segments in that case. Now we need to efficiently use these 4K VLANs as they're still eminent on the ethernet wire itself. And I guess my PC today or my server today is mostly connected on the layer two wire. By, by using this space in a different way, we're using it now in a more efficient way by going down either to a single switch to host that VLAN space and allows to stitch it over the VNI space. Let me add here VLAN, let me add here VNI. 
and stitch a VLAN, whatever we want on the wire to a VNI. Let's say we use 10,000 here to another VLAN on the other side. So I don't have to have consistent naming or consistent uh, layer two namespace addressing at the present time. Now even more, we can go down and say, we do a VLAN usage on a per port and assign these to a different VNI and VXLAN. So with this, we can say VLAN 10 on one port and VLAN 10 on another port on a given switch is different in the usage, which allows more efficient use of multi-tenancy uh, in the layer two space and you re allows us to reuse the VLAN space on a per switch or on a per port level. So this is all about what we have in multi-tenancy in the data center in 2016, how we evolved from an Ethernet VRF light kind of approach or, or an Ethernet VLAN approach into a VXLAN MPBGP approach where we're using VNI and VPN technology, where we're using per port VLANs and per switch VLANs to scale the overall networks itself.